to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, you know, my wife Cindy likes to jump out of planes, and I've done some skydiving myself. And uh, one of the experiences of skydiving that you have, especially the first time, but every time for me, is there's that drive. It's the night before, and you feel your hands, and if they're a little bit clammy, you know you're actually going to go jump. And then you make the drive to the airport. Like here in, uh, in Oahu, it's only about a 40-minute drive to the North Shore. You dive out of an airplane that's over the ocean and uh, with the huge mountains right next to you. It's just gorgeous. But when you get there, you go into this little room and sign away papers that say if you die, it's okay with you, them, with you. And then you look at the guys rolling the parachutes, and sometimes they look like maybe you don't trust them, you know. They look like young kids and maybe smoke too much marijuana the night before or something. But anyway, sooner or later, they put a ba they put a – a parachute on your back and then sooner or later you're heading towards this airplane and then you're in the airplane and then uh there may be 10 or 20 people in there and uh depending on when you're jumping all of a sudden you notice the plane is getting emptier and emptier you're just not used to being in an airplane where fewer and fewer people are in it you know and uh and there's so there's this trepidation and then there's this jump and for the most part most people when they jump uh there, there's a look of kind of fear, a little anxiety, but as soon as they jump when the camera's on them, you see this look of ecstatic joy. And uh, there's just this, this, this great look of, of love where you're free falling, and then after about a mile, about a minute later, you're under canopy, and you, you go from the most radical place you've ever been in, the, in your life when you're in free fall to the most peaceful, beautiful place of perspective. And I remember once I was jumping with my son Jeremiah, and... We were about to. He was in. The, he was about to jump out when uh, the plane had to take another whole four-minute lap to come back to the jump zone because we were getting out of the jump zone. And in the meantime, there was another guy there that wanted to jump, and uh, with a, he was tied to his uh, instructor, strapped to the instructor, and we were signaled by this man's uh, instructor, who was you know he was tied to, strapped to, to just go on ahead. And as we walked by him, I got to tell you, he had lost his bowels. There was it was just a horrible, horrible. Um, uh, smell and that's what uh, a failure to launch is, smells like um, but there's two, two, two lessons we can learn one is that uh, for me jumping out of an airplane is the scariest and most thrilling and most uh, freeing and most invigorating and most empower one of the most empowering things you can do but there's something a lot like it that is, uh, that is, is similar and that's going to confession especially if some of you haven't gone in a while you're like I, w I need to go to confession. I want to go to confession, but I'm scared to go to confession. And uh, you get all worried, and then and then you're you're going over to the confessional. Oh, I got to tell the priest this, and I got to tell the priest that. And then uh, and then you jump and you start start confessing. And then there's this tremendous. Uh, so many men, especially, tell me how incredible the confessional has been in their lives. The sacramental grace that give, goes forth. And then you feel like you can go out and conquer the world. So I'm just telling you, men especially, don't be the guy sitting in the plane that lost his bowels and never went to confession. <laughs> be the guy that jumped and let the God's grace and power uh, uh, free you for, to be, liberate you to do the great things that God has for you. So we're with uh, a friend of mine and my pastor and my confessor, Father Scott Searcy, who uh, I had the pleasure of witnessing do his first skydive. Father Scott, aloha. Aloha, bear. Now, Father Scott is, oh, 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 for those of you watching on, on YouTube, he already did this. Okay, so describe to him, Father, what you just did and why. Because well, there's millions of people listening. There's only a thousand or so people watching on YouTube. <laughs> well, aloha, Bear. Once again, it's a great honor to be with you and to, uh, and to embrace this wonderful opportunity for the new evangelization and to share God's love with uh, those who are hearing and watching us on, on YouTube. But uh I want to thank you uh, and the brothers that were a part of uh, the long ride home, having this opportunity to 
take that leap of faith and jump out of an airplane for the first time to do my first skydiving. And there's no better place to do it than on the north shore of Oahu. And one of those aspects of uh, truly giving thanks to God was just rejoicing and, and, and jumping and clapping and snapping and pointing up to the sky and saying, thank you, Lord. And that was kind of uh, a theme that we were doing throughout uh, the season three of The Long Ride Home uh, of one of my characters that I would, would do. But it was a little alter ego there. Uh, but it still united this the, this great you know excitement of sharing the faith and, and being so happy and knowing the Lord is with you every step of the way. It's just so cool. Father Scott, uh, we kind of set him up because every, <laughs> every day but we were here, we were shooting Long Ride Home for over a month or so, but Father Scott was here for about a third of that time. But every day we would we would get together with Father with a group of about 20 of us filming. That's right. I'd go, who, who here wants to go skydiving? And everybody would say, I do, I do, I do. I do, I do. And even Father Scott, even before we came here, he, he said he wanted to go. So, um, yeah. But everybody was in on the joke except for Father Scott. I thought it was a little strange. You would ask all the time, and I'm like, okay, I still, I really do want to go. If you want to hear me say no, it's not going to happen. I want to go skydive. Uh, and yeah, everyone was behind me. <laughs> and so what happened when we got to this jump place early in the morning? Well, uh, then we had an interview right before we were going to get on the plane after we signed our lives away, and then I find out that I'm going to be the one representing the pack, and everyone else has – these really weak excuses. <laughs> I think, my, no, I don't think so. I mean, I had suffered a paper cut. Well, exactly. And then so. the hangnail and the no Wi Fi up in the plane. But other than that, you know. And I think Ace Bagley was, <laughs> Ace Bagley, you know, our biker president of Knights, of Knights on Bikes, was afraid his hair yes. would get messed up. He's got hair down to his waist, you know, that braid. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, yeah, but tell us that experience when, from the moment we, well, you know, you were the most relaxed person I'd ever gone skydiving with. But you were you were thrilled about it. But you were most tell us I about really from the was. moment we got in the car and we're heading north and what your experience well, was. Well, the this the anticipation of the moment. This is something I've always really wanted to do, but never really had the opportunity to do. You wouldn't want to do this by yourself, and I never really met anyone else that was crazy enough to do it with me. Exactly. <laughs> so then I and was you like, still oh, have I know it. with a bunch and you of still guys. Have exactly. It. Yeah. Exactly. We did. But at least we were we shared it together though in a very yeah. powerful way, which was really cool. So, uh, so you, we're in the yeah. car. We're on the way up. Yeah. You didn't even have to stop to go to the bathroom five times. No. You, no. <laughs> you were you were like a little bit worried that I wasn't reacting the way I should. Yeah, you seemed too <laughs> casual. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you do know that you're going to be jumping out of a perfectly plain, perfectly yeah. good plane. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, yeah, I know. But it's something like I always wanted to do. I knew that the Lord was my shepherd. He was there to, to help me and guide me and to – really gave me this wonderful opportunity. Uh, it did get a little weird when you're starting to sign, you know, it seemed like a hundred forms. <laughs> Which basically, that, yeah. Yeah. Saying that I'm not going to sue anybody if something terrible happens. Uh, that's always never a, a great thing to do. But right. uh, And then the videos that we shared, the first video was the beauty of skydiving. Then the second video was the fear factor of skydiving. This could be very serious and you could possibly lose your life, but enjoy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I, you know, and I used to have a home on the North Shore right there, yeah, and I've yeah. seen, uh, I've saw someone land, uh, get hung up on the telephone pole in front of my house. Jeez. I've seen, oh. uh, unfortunately, uh, people uh, land in the ocean and and drown, and and I made sure to let you know all these things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> but I was uh, blessed with Wes, who was my uh, uh, my jump buddy. Um, and I'll always remember Wes. He was he had my back literally. <laughs> you know, isn't that he interesting? Was, how you you yeah. that person may not remember you, but you're ever that that first jump master especially. Oh yes, yes. It was a very powerful experience, and he was he was great, very relaxed um, as well, which made me feel very relaxed. I felt in good hands. But isn't it um, weird when they open up the door of the airplane? Well, I had a great seat. See, as you were talking about in the monologue, that whole weird feeling of seeing the, the plane empty out like that, I was actually last one on, first one out, which was uh -huh. a fantastic experience. So I was actually had a great view. I was sitting there with a clear door, being able to watch everything. They actually opened up the door as we were climbing up to our altitude. And uh, and there's some of the video which shows, you know, like, yeah, and put my hand out and say, yeah, we're going fast. <laughs> you know, But uh, it was exciting. It was exhilarating. I remember the uh, first time I jumped, my jump master, um, oh no, the guy who was filming, part of our team, he, he uh, excuse me, I'm going to get a drink of water. 
the door was open. Yeah. He's leaning halfway, a little bit out of the door, right. leaning against the opening, reading a book. <laughs> and like, this just doesn't seem right. This is his ordinary day-to-day -day activities, yes. And if people want to see this jump, they can watch it on Long Ride Home Season 3 when probably they a year can. or so before it comes out. But yep. Okay, so now you're, it's your turn, and what happens? You're about ready to jump. What happens? Well, that was, that was the one moment of, of a little anticipation and, and trepidation, actually. As the, uh, the door opened up, we were still sitting there. Everything was good. And then I see uh, the, the camera operator. She actually jumps out. And she's hanging with one arm to the side of the plane, and she has the camera pointed at me. And then Wes comes out, and he puts his arms up and uh, on the plane, and I'm, like, strapped like a baby to, his, <laughs> to his, his front. And I'm literally hanging out of the plane. And, uh, yeah, and your, no ba your back is strapped to his stomach, kind of. My yeah. back is strapped to his stomach. And, and <laughs> so I'm looking out. And I, there's, there's no turning back now. We're, let's go. So you can see in my face, like, wow, that's high. <laughs> well, we're going to be, you guys, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wasik adventure and see if he, if he lived. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wasik adventure. We have a cast member of Long Ride Home with us and my pastor, Father Scott Searcy from Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church in, uh, uh, in the Atlantic, Florida. And uh, we need to let you know, you know, this is, this is Long Ride Home. It's, it's the most unique TV show that's ever uh, been created. It's been created for Catholic television, but also uh, crossover enough, interesting and cinematically uh, quality enough that we can cross over into the Armed Forces Network where it's been aired, and now it's up on iTunes and Prime Video and Google Play. In other words, we're, we are calling people to initial or to deeper conversion. Right. And we're doing it in a way that is pretty much riveting and really entertains because we're riding motorcycles across the United States. And uh, we want to invite those of you guys who are, who are bikers, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. And by making uh, certain different levels of donations, you can actually become part of the cast. We're shooting season four riding up to Lansing, Michigan, and I think over to Glacier Park this coming August 2019. So, yeah, so a lot of you have seen the show. Uh, EWTN showed season one uh, all 10 episodes about 20 times, but you might not have seen all the episodes, and you might not have seen them in sequence. So go to iTunes, grab that brother-in-law and, uh, and, a, and a couple beers, sit down and watch the first ep episode. You might end up power-watching all of them. So Father Scott was our pastor for the shooting of season three here in Hawaii. And so last, uh, before the break, uh, Father Scott was describing when we had him jump out of an airplane. And we're, <laughs> we're going to find out now whether he lived or not. Yes. Well, thanks be to God I'm here. So that's a good sign. <laughs> so what happened? But, now you're, on, you're, right, you're, out, you're well, on the edge. Right before, we're right on the edge there. And one thing that I, I did have a very powerful moment, and I know that you mentioned uh, that Armed Forces Radio and TV was also able to show uh, the long ride home. And while we were up there, on the north shore of Oahu, I was able to look across the island and see the entire view of the place. It's incredible. And of course, Pearl Harbor was the opposite on opposite side of where we were. But I could see Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor in a very powerful way that allowed me to think of all the people that, that have served to protect our country, to protect our freedoms. And in a particular way, I started in a very, you know, humbling uh, way, being in solidarity with those who were not doing Jump, you know, they're not doing skydiving out of entertainment, but out of service to their country. And there was yeah. a part of me that kind of wanted to say thank you to those. And I'm going to and I'm going to do this freely because you are allowing me to do so um, by their sacrifices that they made. And what do you think about and I was that? thinking you know, and seeing that and then ready to to take that leap of faith and, and allow West to let go of the plane. It was just like, wow, what an experience. And the first thing we do is we, we go out of the plane is we do a flip. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if he did that on yeah. purpose. So I, I might, I might have egged him on to do that. But yeah, you did a. It was an incredible <laughs> flip, and the way that uh, the videographer was 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 capturing it, she caught the flip, and we actually went in front of the sun as we flipped around. It was pretty uh, cool. Awesome. It was a neat experience. <laughs> and then, so you're in total free fall. You're actually going 120 miles an hour. Wow, what Thanks. exhilaration! Yeah, and they say you don't even need to breathe because the oxygen just goes right into your. 
capillaries directly. I would say so. And one thing that did kind of take me by surprise is that I couldn't hear anything because my ears completely popped as we jumped out of the plane. And I was like, oh, I can't hear it. He's like, just blow on your nose. And I did that later as the canopy oh. opened up. But, uh, but I was just like, wow, what an experience. And then we were trying to, to do our, our signs. As and we you were did it. Around. Yeah. And uh, did a couple of blessings from being up on the <laughs> free Yeah, ball. you did it. That was so cool. Yeah. And then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, the canopy opens. Yep, he, he gives a little sign for the videographer to back away, and then the canopy opens, and that is one uh, powerful jerk uh, when that takes place. And, uh, and wow, just the, 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 the gravitas of that experience of the canopy opening. First, you're saying, thanks be to God, and secondly, wow, what a, what a powerful jolt that was to the system. And then, then after that, just enjoying that, that soft glide back to uh, uh, safe land. It's and we had a great a landing, too. Yeah, I mean, you do this, you have this tremendous, when you jump out of the plane, you have no sense that you're actually falling. You don't really feel the the land coming closer to you because you're so, you're 12,000 feet or 10,000 feet. And then when you're under under canopy, it's just like, especially when you're alone, I mean, you can sing and laugh and shout. No one's going to hear you, you know. Beautiful and experience. You're, and you're just, um, and you see the perspective. Uh, you gain this perspective. But the way you guys landed was radical. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, and it, it was great hearing you guys cheering me on as well, and, and that what what a powerful experience that was. And, you could hear us while and, you were while you were landing. Oh, I could hear, I could hear that. Yeah, after I popped my ears, <laughs> they were yeah. coming down. Yeah, and uh, we came right by you guys and did a perfect landing, and I think we got that on video. It's, it, yeah. it's fantastic. So, well, yeah. there's so there's what so. A, go ahead, Father. Sorry. What a great way to experience the first jump, and then to have it for posterity. Uh, uh, you know, on a. Uh, on the the long ride home, what a great way to to, to share that with everyone. It's fantastic. And you know, you, there's something about the brotherhood of the men, though. You know that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Going up there together and us cheering you on, and that's what we need yeah. from each other as men. So uh, we need. Yeah, and it's not to do a hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to do bold things. I remember once I brought a a, a a a guy that I knew in California said, you know, my psychiatrist says I really need to get a hobby, so I'm going to learn how to surf. And I go, you know, need a hobby. You need adversity. You need a challenge. Right. Right. And he came out here and uh, uh, basically uh, we, some of us came out surfing and he came out to Hawaii. This is before I moved here. And he left three days later because, you know, mm -hmm. men don't want a hobby. They want a challenge. Uh, they right. want adversity. And then in the company of brothers, it forges. And Father, describe to them how uh, – totally challenging a, a long ride home shoot is it's 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 demanding it is a pilgrimage that's for sure and every pilgrimage uh has a challenge of you know making sure that what we're doing first and foremost is based in prayer what we're doing is we're recognizing the uh the focus of the new evangelization and you know what we're doing is participating in something that's greater than the individual as we're doing it together right. and that's a very powerful journey uh and and to recognize you know that we all have we're bringing different things to the journey we're all coming with with different backgrounds and we come together and when we ride together it just shows that the spirit unites us and brings the the diversity of our charisms and unifies them for the greater glory of God, it's a fantastic experience, and it, and and the adversity really reveals, oh yeah, uh, on a very gritty level. I mean, I, I think more more than anybody, I I have a challenge because I'm trying to host, write, guide a bunch <laughs> of knuckle draggers and the crew, and I lose it occasionally, and the guys just have to yeah. come alongside me and say, you know, I mean, I literally just lose it, and everybody, I think, on the ride, maybe with few exceptions, such as yourself, at some point. Just kind of lose it, and then that's when it all gets real. Oh yeah. When we're when yeah. We're, well, that's when you have to say, all right, w okay, I know I I have my 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 human failings, and when when you lose it, think of Saint Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and 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 I'm sure he lost it quite a few times, and all his different journeys, the way that he had things planned out, and uh, yeah. he wanted to go his way, but uh, when yeah. he opened himself up to that opportunity to. To really put his trust in God and and go along for the journey and allow the Holy Spirit to guide him, as opposed to the way that I had things planned. Obviously, that's the best journey. And that's really what happens on Long Ride Home. The unexpected right. happens. And you know, Paul. It's interesting what he said. 
uh, in, on two occasions, I believe it's in two occasions, he says, I wanted to go do this, but the Holy Spirit prevented me. Right. But on another occasion, he said, I wanted to do this, but Satan pre prevented me. Ah, wow. In, in yeah. regard, you know, re regard, I mean, when he was being, you know, he would be preaching in the town for two, mm -hmm. three, four weeks, six weeks, and suddenly they're dragging him out to stone him. But guess what? Uh, a year later, he's writing them a letter because the church he established was was grounded there. But exactly. whether in whether, yeah, whether in your life you're facing the adversity or, or or uh, uh, whether the, you're what you feel is what where God is directing you, you're stopped and you know it's the enemy, or you're stopped and you know it's the Holy Spirit. The larger view is that God's in charge regardless, and just carry on. Amen. Yeah, and it's important to be able to discern those spirits and recognize where the Lord is truly guiding us. And, and sometimes it, we have to recognize that the Lord is the God of, of uh, uh, you know, unexpectedness. There's surprises, he's the God of surprises. You know, there's things that we're, we did not expect, we did not plan, but it's the proper path that God wants us to come out of our comfort zone and to truly go out into deep waters. You know, as, as the Lord says to, to, to Peter, Duke in Altum, go into the deep waters. And I got yeah. do how do you say it? How do you spell that? Duke Duke in Altum. D U C I N A L T U M. Duke in Altum. Go out into the deep. D U C I N A L T U M. That's correct. That's going to be the name of our our show. That's fantastic for one oh, of nice. our episodes. Oh, nice. Episodes. Go into the deep? Yes. Well, that's so cool cuz I have deep adventure Deep, mm -hmm. You know, my Deep Adventure Ministry, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue book, my Deep in the Way of Surfing Guide to the Soul. I never had that. But, hey, guys, we got to take a hard break. We'll be right back with more with my, my personal pastor, Father Scott Searcy of Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church. This is the Bear Wozniak and Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. My... Co-adventure guy today is with us is Father Scott Searcy, my pastor at Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church and a cast member of Long Ride Home. Uh, we got to remind everybody to uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, subscribe to our weekly newsletter because when you do that, you get an email on Saturday morning with that uh, week, weekend's uh, one-hour radio show that airs uh, on EWTN, heard by millions of people. You get a YouTube version of it sent to you so you can see us and then we'd like for you to click on that when you get it and share that with your friends. And be, by all means, go to the Bear Wozniak channel on YouTube and subscribe. Because when you subscribe um, to our YouTube channel, you get my morning catechism classes that come out every morning. There's, I do a 15-minute on the beach wherever I am in the world, uh, Ocean Sunrise Catechism. And you get uh, whatever we're, we post up there and you get our radio show. And when you push subscribe also and it bumps our subscribers so YouTube says hey something's happening here let's promote this and you get YouTube involved in in evangelization so um, please go to our website deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter and go to our YouTube site Bear Wozniak and subscribe to uh, our all of our shows that we post there we're talking with my uh, personal pastor Father Scott Searcy Father Scott so glad you could join us on on uh, the Bear Wozniak adventure it's an honor and a privilege Bear well, we were talking about how, you know, um, you think about adversity, and sometimes you, you definitely see the enemy's hand. But right. guess what? It's not like good and evil are fighting. It's like this great, eternal, omnipotent God, and I hate to say it, people tell me not to say it, and some punk, uh, <laughs> the, the enemy, in, in comparison, right? Right, right. And, but, but, you know, when Paul, when Paul and Barnabas went to Cyprus, Bar Barnabas' right. home, they went to evangelize. And when they got there, guess what they found? Christians. And who were, who were they? They're Christians who fled Jerusalem under Paul's persecution. Right. So Interesting. Coming right back around. Yep. Yeah, so the, the persecution just was like uh, a, a hot breath blowing across the embers that scattered the Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. Right. Once again, making those stumbling blocks into stepping stones with God's grace. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. God is able yep. to make all things work to the good for those who are called according to his purposes. Amen. So now let's do a backtracking here. So you're a member of Long Ride Home, which is the pinnacle of your entire life. <laughs> but we know we know the source and summit. The summit is actually the Eucharistic celebration. Can we of go course. back with you to the time when you were young and how you came all the way? Your your 
to your discernment and what you did at the two, I know you went you were serving at UCF for example can you just give right. us give us all of that it, well the, the the abridged version of course uh, when I, I was a uh, an altar boy at uh, at St Bernadette's Catholic Church in Homa Tib or Homa Diocese of Homa Thibodeau in Homa Louisiana and is that a uh, rumor or is that a real place that is a real place okay. Homa Thibodeau Diocese yes yeah, in southern Louisiana about sixty miles south of New you Orleans you know what I at, spoke there once at a Legatus. Yeah, I, down I the just, bayou. I just didn't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Homa Thibodeau. They're, the Homus Indians were the ones who actually founded the area. So, uh, and Thibodeau was just a guy's name. So, uh, but I was uh, an altar boy, and and we had an opportunity for uh, to go on field trips from time to time. And this particular field trip, uh, Father Danny took us to uh, uh, Saint Joseph's Seminary in Saint Benedict, Louisiana, which is across Lake Pontchartrain, and. Uh, it was there after we had our lunch there that I just um, I had a very warm sense of of, uh, of peace and kind of did a little walk after lunch by myself and, and found myself in a uh, in a chapel there and and uh, just just had a very strong connection the way the sun was coming into the windows of just praying before the, the blessed sacrament in the tabernacle there and and while I was there uh, I just had an awesome sense of belonging love and calling being sent forth and this is I'm only 13 years old I'm uh, pretty strange to experience these feelings going on and uh, as I was praying before the blessed sacrament with you know kneeling uh, before the the Lord I felt a hand on my shoulder and it was uh, the, the priest and he just said one word awesome he didn't know what was going on but he just said awesome and then he walked away Little did he know that later I was kind of experiencing my first vocational calling at that moment. And uh, as I was discerning it, I, I first talked about it with my friends, and they were like, uh, after they stopped laughing, <laughs> they said, well, maybe maybe you do. Maybe you should talk to, to the priest, and I did. And, and he says, well, that's wonderful. Continue to pray, uh, discern about that, and, and talk to your parents about it. And when I talked to my parents, I think they were ready. They were thrilled. They were ready to send me to the seminary the next day. Praise but God. Then I, wow. Yeah. Yeah, which is wonderful to have that family support because that doesn't always happen. But then I got a, a little strange feeling of, whoa, whoa, uh, I'm only 13 years old. Uh, I still would like to go out on a date and see what other you know possibilities there are that, that lie ahead uh, to finish up. Uh, you know, I was just entering you know middle school and preparing for high school. So I went back and, uh, and then in the midst of, of high school, we actually moved from Louisiana to uh, to Florida in uh, January of '88. It was the middle of my my uh, junior year in high school, and and um, you know continued to 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 you know get involved here and there in my parish. And then I went to University of South Florida first uh, to get my uh, associate's degree before I went to University of Central Florida for for film school. But uh, while I was there at University of South Florida, I kind of had a, a bit of a falling away where I was, you know, trying to be my own man, kind of, you know, not, not relying on myself, not putting my trust in the Lord, and I uh, kind of fell away. Uh, but I still had a friend who was active in, in, in youth ministry, and he always invited me to, to come to his his parish to, to celebrate the vigil mass, and I many times had many excuses for him. And one particular evening, I, I didn't have an excuse, and thanks be to God, I, I went, and while I was, uh, we, we got there early because he had to do some planning for youth ministry, and I found myself in that church alone. And my eyes, my heart were drawn to the, the tabernacle and the Blessed Sacrament there. And I and I went there, and I was thinking, is the Lord going to send a, a lightning bolt down to strike me down? Or, you know, uh, I, I felt a little embarrassed that I had, you know, kind of stepped away from the faith. And, and uh, you know, I just, I was like, you know, the Lord's going to, you know, be mad at me. But what I felt as I knelt before the Blessed Sacrament once again was that same feeling I felt those many years ago, not uh, condemnation or judgment. I felt love and 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 uh, and devotion and, and, and ascending. Once again, that, that same feeling I felt, and I'm getting goosebumps speaking about it right now. And as I started to feel that love, just tears started coming down my face. And I said, you know, I, I need to be reconciled. And and I said, you know, and as I'm praying, I need to go to confession. The priest walked right by, and I said, thank you, Lord. Okay. So shared a wonderful sacrament of reconciliation, confessed my sins, and got back on the right path and, you know, try to put my faith into action a little bit better. But still, 
I was still not yet ready to jump jump in uh, full force. But I was like, you know, Lord, if this is a true calling, uh, you know, it'll be there in 10 years from that original call. So I was thinking about 23. Uh, but 23 years became 20, you know, uh, you know, I became 25 and, the, and things get fast. So those that 10 years became about actually about 16 years. And uh, the Lord was very patient, allowing me to answer a few what ifs in life some good relationships, some good uh, work experiences, but nothing completed me the way that I knew that the Lord was calling me to a, a deeper relationship with him through seminary formation. So finally, when I answered that call, it was uh, I was at a mass of Thanksgiving, a first mass of, of two new priests for the Diocese of Orlando. Oh, um, my goodness. It was wow. Father, uh, Father Stephen Parks and Father Miguel Gonzalez. It was at Annunciation Catholic Church. I was a parishioner there. And just seeing these young men say yes to the Lord really said, okay, you need to step up and and say, speak, Lord, your servant's listening. So I I, I researched and, and talked to the local parish priest. And he got me involved with a vocation director, and things just started to fall perfectly into place. And once again, feeling that sense of love and strengthening and calling and sending. And, uh, you know, God willing, the, the, I entered the seminary. Things worked very, very well. I was at St. John V, or I'm sorry, at St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary for my six years of formation there. And then... I was okay. ordained to the priesthood. But, but let, let's talk about that a bit. By the way, yep. I, I, I want to go, continue this in the next segment. But I, I, you know, I have to let you know, I had a vocational calling. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you exactly when it happened. This was before I really had a real deep personal relationship with God, but I wanted to. Right. I was sitting in my social studies class. I think I was a junior in high school. And I had this sense of awe. It's like the room just, the teacher course, blah, blah, blah anyway. But right. this sense of awe came over me that I could bring a human life into the world. Mm. So I, I, the, I, I can remember that. It changed everything in my life. It was before then and after then. I could be a father. Right. And all my decisions, Beautiful my, gift. my working two or three jobs and getting my way through college, not going to some parties, uh, not, going to, not being with certain people and all that right. sort of thing was because from that moment I was a father. Not, not in the sense that you're a father. But that was definitely a vocation I was called, definitely I was Amen. called to. But I want to ask you about, when we, I want to go deeper into this, So, and we, we're going to carry it into the next segment. we got about a minute here, a minute and a half here. You talked about the six years. I want to talk about that. What, what is that? It's like a black box for some of us. We don't know what really happens. <laughs> give, us yeah. the first, give us a minute of that. Okay, well, formation is, is based up in four particular areas, the four pillars of formation, which is uh, you have the spiritual formation, uh, the intellectual formation, which is pretty understandable, but then there's very important other areas of human formation and then pastoral formation. All four of those have to be strengthened and formed in order for you to stand as a disciple of Christ uh, to, to serve in the priesthood. So you can't put all your focus on the spiritual your, or put all your focus on the intellectual. The other the other uh, pillars must also be strengthened, especially the human uh, formation, to understand who you are as a child of God, as a disciple of the Lord, as a man made in the image and likeness of God, and, and to embrace uh, the great gift of your, your Catholic masculinity and to enjoy the fact of your fruitfulness as a man and how to serve uh, how to embrace self-sacrificial love to those whom we're going to, to serve. All of that is so important. And all of those different pillars uh, nourish each other and strengthen each other. We're talking with Father Scott Searcy, my pastor at Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church in Indian Atlantic, Florida. When I'm, I'm in Florida about half the time. And really, I'll tell you that one of the reasons why I'm in Florida is because of that church. In fact, that may be me. I mean, I know the Lord had other plans for me. I want my wife there and stuff, but I will be right back to talk more about uh, priestly formation, which can really be something that we all can, whether we're priests or not, have a calling to priesthood to be formed in that way. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, I want to thank, we have two sponsors for our, our show. We also have, uh, we have Solidarity HealthShare. They are a, a form of a health insurance company. They're not really a health insurance company, but they 
function like that in our lives. And I love them. Two members of my family use them. And I'm proud of them because their form of health share stays truth to the magisterium of the church. Amen. And I just love that. And then I want to thank uh, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Uh, they are the largest Catholic credit union in the, in the world. And they personally, while we were shooting Long Ride Home, when Father Scott, who's my guest today, and I were in Hawaii, we were filming Long Ride Home, riding motorcycles, filming 12, 16-hour days. And uh, in the middle of all that, through text messages, emails, and a few voice calls, they helped me refinance uh, or finance a, a used car that I bought. So um, they are amazing, just amazing. And so we, we love them very much. But we also want to thank you because many of you have gone to our website, deepadventure.com, and you've clicked that donate button, and uh, you've given uh, you know graciously to our ministry, and also um, some of you donate monthly, which uh, they it can set you up on a recurring monthly donation, and we really value that. You know our our long ride home television show is, costs about a quarter million for each season, and the t- the radio show and my morning catechisms, all of those things, uh, it's a miracle how the Lord has provided sometimes, uh, and we really appreciate what you do for us. So go to our website and become part. Ride with the pack. Father Scott, welcome back to the show. So Thank you very much. Great to be here with you. You were talking now about we were talking about Father Scott's call to the priesthood and then I were talking about that form the formation. Uh the six years of formation. Uh and the diaconate program I know too has has usually a couple of years. Many years, yes. But yes. we all are in the formation uh school of the Lord. But tell right. me what what is the, 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 the curriculum? I mean I always I thought it was I'm so proud as a Catholic for the fact that all priests uh, first uh, pursue studies in philosophy. Yes, that's what? the that's the foundation. That's the foundation of theology is philosophy. That that uh, that search for meaning in life. And obviously, if you have that foundation of philosophy, then we can get a. Get a it was only through uh, philosoph- philosophical studies in the light of Christ, though, that it really made sense. Interestingly right. enough, because I, I did some philosophical studies at University of Central Florida, which is uh, where I got my bachelor's degree, and it felt a little uh, meaningless almost and, and kind of dour. But once I saw it in the light of Christ, when I took the philosophy classes at, at St. Vincent de Paul Regional Seminary, I was like, aha, that makes so it, much more. Yes. The eureka moments there. I was like, oh, that's why our soul yearns for that that completion that understanding that desire to as saint augustine says my soul my my heart is is restless until it rests in you and has that knowledge of you the lord so i think it's it's so important to have that good philosophical foundation to then have your mind have a little bit more ability to embrace the deeper uh, theological truths uh, whether it be with christology or trinitarian theology or you know, moral theology, those different aspects of, of our... Of the our, study of Christology is... Ah! Yeah. Oh. It is. It's beautiful. It, it actually... Study of Christology has... has uh, allows us to have a better understanding of who we are... Absolutely. ...as human beings, which is so beautiful. The mystery of the Incarnation is so profound and so beautiful. Well, I, yeah, Jesus, um, does he have one will, or does he have... Is he all God and all man? Or does he yeah. have a combined will where, you know, he only has one will? No. Um, they're just so much. Um, so but, deep. But you need to understand the one and the many. You need to understand philosophy to get to that to that level of really understanding the mystery of Jesus Christ. But, um, you know, I, I had the same experience. I had a profoundly uh, profound experience uh, to attend a philosophy class. There was only 12 of us and a very mm-hmm. well-known professor of philosophy taught us and um, it was in my junior year and we were um, we sat in, in this conference room surrounded by old books but you know I love books yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, we went through Socrates Plato Amenides and all the way from to Locke and you know mm-hmm. uh, Nietzsche all through everything but I don't think we touched Aquinas and Augustine and, mm. and at, at, I'll tell you what happened to me at the end of taking that class um, studying all there was of the world's philosophy so many of them there were like yeah but not quite yeah that's yeah. but not quite and so it left me feeling empty and i was a junior in college i had been i'd never had a drink except for at my sister's wedding i was not uh sexually active you know i was being uh chased in every way right. and i finally got to the point if that's all there is because i tried catholicism and then the priest in the back of the church where i would go he was talking about buddhism to me you know so i was just like 
It was like, who is Jesus? Was he a real person? I was like uh, adrift. And I was about to just say, well, not wine, woman, and song, but sex, drug, and rock right. and roll. I was about to go that right. way. And right. that's when the Lord caught me uh, uh, through the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. But I, I was left with that great feeling of just like, I've tried, uh, I've tried, East, I've tried Eastern religion via my martial arts. I've tried mm -hmm. taking philosophy. I've tried Catholicism. At least I thought I had. Right. And then the Lord just grabbed me. So I know philosophy is the love of truth. Yep, that's it. And that's and Jesus. what's the greatest truth? <laughs> Jesus is. And what I, is truth? Yeah, that's the whole yeah. that whole question of that is the desire of our hearts that uh, Pontius Pilate you know proclaims. And what is truth? And Jesus is like. You're looking at it, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I am it. the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. Yeah. And, and so then um, the formation takes place. Mm -hmm. And then your early ministry, and, and your, I know you were ministering at UCF, too. Tell us about right, that. Right, which was wonderful. My, my first assignment was back at Annunciation Catholic Church, and um, then my second uh, assignment was, was downtown Orlando at St. James Cathedral. And actually there I started to have some connections uh, with UCF, being the spiritual director for some of the students. And then my third assignment was uh, pastor at uh, Most Precious Blood in Oviedo, which is just north of the UCF campus. And also a part of that assignment was becoming the, the chaplain for, uh, for Catholic campus ministry at UCF. So the Lord brought me full, full circle there as well, which is wonderful to go back to my alma mater and to uh, continue to fan, fan the, flyer, uh, the flames of faith of, of the students that were there, which was you know, when I was there, the ministry was in its infancy, and now it's really thriving and doing such a wonderful, Praise wonderful God. job. Thanks Thank be to God. Thank you for doing that. You know, Father, yeah. um, i got to warn people, never go to a UCF football game. <laughs> you didn't like the bounce house? you got to love the bounce house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Tell them, what, tell, them what, can, yeah, yeah. tell them what the bounce house is. The bounce house is our stadium. Uh, it's it's uh, Spectrum Stadium, I guess is what it is now, at UC University of Central Florida. But the way that the uh, the bleachers are set up, they give a lot. Uh, when you actually are jumping up and down, you can feel it moving the whole place, and you're you you get wrapped up in that when the music starts playing, and they're uh, they're 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 dancing uh, as the, the the team is playing, and you are a part of wonderful experience there. It's you're cool, just bouncing around. Yeah, everybody's bouncing in unison, and you're yeah. like you're gonna get launched. You feel like you're gonna get launched into space where the whole thing's gonna cave yeah. in. And the other thing is, you never sit down. No, and of course no, you had you'll that. hurt yourself. You'll get uh, you know, you know fractured uh, vertebrae if you sit and down. You, and you can't see the, see the game. But um, yeah. you know they they had this beautiful uh, young man, uh, the football, the quarterback from Hawaii, and um, uh -huh. who yes. of course uh, unfortunately was injured. But we went to their we went to their uh, one of their game one of their last games, and uh, and it was uh, so thrilling. But it was interesting because of his connection to Hawaii. Everyone's saying aloha, and we are ohana. So um, all that's going on. I think we were on. at the game right after that, correct? Or, or was it? Were you at the I, championship game? Or, or I don't even remember anymore. Because I think it was, okay, the, it was, yeah, it was. It was Mackenzie Milton, and we yes. keep him in prayer for a full recovery. Uh, and uh, he's from Hawaii, and he was hurt during the USF game, and yeah. it was that was two games out from the championship. But they they won that game, and then they yeah. won a, another game, and then they got to the uh, the uh, athlete, uh, American Athletic Conference championship, and. Everyone was wearing lays, and they yeah. had the Ohana uh, uh, spirit, and uh, and they spelled Ohana uh, with his number ten, was which was that's the, the, the his his jer jersey number, and it was just you know recognizing family, which was beautiful. Ohana, and yeah, and that's together. what we love in Hawaii, and it's interesting because my son Jeremiah was with me, and in Hawaii, like if you say the words um, uh, Hana Ho, that's mm -hmm. like encore or do it again. So if you hear a good song or whatever. So when they had scored a touchdown and they were having to make a comeback to win this game because they were trailing greatly, Jeremiah yells out Hana Ho. So I yell out Hana Ho too. And the girl in front of me turns and she goes, it's Ohana. <laughs> and I go, and, and then she looks, I think I must have had my, my uh, Hawaiian um, uh, fish hook or something. She fish looks at me and she like sees my tattoos and she goes, oh, uh, and I go, oh, oh, home means do it one more time. And she goes, you know what? I think I'll believe you. Hey, we're talking <laughs> with Father Scott Cersei. And speaking of Hanaho, we got to go, but we got to get you back one more time on our show because we barely scratched the surface. Father okay. Scott, um, if people want to reach out, your ministry is at holynameofjesushnj.org. 
hj.org, wonderful parish of holy name of Jesus, uh, right on A1A. We've got a, a, a beautiful community here filled with hospitality and Christ love. And I know you and I both have a view of the ocean right now, don't we? Yeah. Me in Hawaii, you there in Florida, so it's not bad. Yep. You've got oh, the we, Pacific, I've got the Atlantic right here. Yeah, so. we got it all covered. Hey, we got to roll. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. And until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. And Father, aloha. how about Aholo. Viva, Viva Cristo Rey? Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. <laughs> aloha, everybody. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.